So what do we have here? Another 808. This little puppy looks great. It's in really good condition. And um, one of my viewers here saw my previous TR808 repair and has problems with his, so contacted me. And um, I'm happy to be able to help him get this little piece of history working properly. So firstly, this is imported from Japan. So this one is 110 volts. So I'm just using a, a step down transformer because we're at 240 volts here in Australia. And we had our own um, European transformer models, which are also 240. And uh, this has a Japanese transformer inside it, obviously 110 you know, um, first stage power supply in it. You can actually swap it over to 240 by changing the transformer and modifying the circuit a little bit, but I don't see that there's any point in doing that. It costs just as much as buying a step down. I think this is about $40, so I just use a step down transformer. This is one that I use for my 100M, System 100M, which I also imported myself from Japan. But the problem with this TR808 is that there's no sound output from the main outputs here. And there's two outputs on a TR-808. There's a low, which is um, usually low impedance line level, and a high output, which um, is for plugging into, say, a guitar input amplifier stage or a keyboard amp that has a um, high impedance input. But you can also just use it to plug your headphones into to listen if the, if the machine's working properly. That's what I've done. It's just hiss and very, very faint signal. So I suggest that in this, the problem will be, and if I, if I connect it to the individual outs, I can hear each of the individual drum sounds. So I know that the circuit's actually working. It runs when it's in play mode. So um, it will be the output tr transistors 10 through to 13, and most probably Q13, which is the final stage before it goes out to these high and low outputs. So let's open it up and do a check do a quick check and find out which one of those transistors is gone. And hopefully I've got some spares. If not, I might have to wait a few days for them to come. But let's check it out. Inside now, um, a really good thing to check is to make sure the fuses are the right value. So these are, they're all 0.5 amp. And the owner actually said to me that he accidentally blew it up because he plugged it into 240 volt and it just blew the fuses, so he was lucky and he just replaced the fuses and they're the right ones, so that's good. If they're too high a value, then you can damage the circuit if you get an overload, so it's important that they are the right values so that they blow if anything goes wrong with the power supply because they're cheap and easy to replace. Down here is the problem area, I suspect. These transistors are, that's Q10, Q11, Q12, Q13. So this is the master transistor, the main transistor before it goes out to the output. So let's check that one, see what's going on. So flipping it over onto the other side, a few things I've noticed. Um, here, the switch has been uh, replaced before. So that's the tap switch. It's a really common thing, the switches fail in these, so that's been worked on before, and they've had to cut the track and then solder the new switch in. And then over on this side as well, here, this point here is where the start-stop switch is. That's also been repaired before as well, which is quite common. So it's probably had new, new switches put in at some point. And there's been some other little modifications and tweaks to the circuit, probably to bypass broken tracks. That's all quite normal. So it's definitely been worked on before. Well, the good news is it wasn't any of these transistors. What I did was I have a signal generator, which is my crow, which has got a sine wave that it outputs. And I went through and touched it on the, the legs of the transistor. And while listening through the headphones, I can hear a sine wave coming through each of these transistors. So I could confirm that they were all working fine. Um, so then I started fiddling with the volume knob and I could find a spot where I could get it to work. So it was a dirty volume pot. So I sprayed that out with some aerosol, with some isopropyl alcohol, and now it turns really nicely. There's no more gunk in there. You usually have to spray them out a few times, then leave them overnight and spray them out again. And then I'll blow the whole thing off and get rid of all the 
the rubbish residue and dust and that sort of thing. And um, I'll clean all the pots that way and give it a good blowout. And then I'll look at the capacitors, check them, and I might replace some of them, like this this one here. It's a non-polarized. Uh, actually, that's electrolytic. Um, I'll replace some of those if they need replacing. Check them on my capacitance checker, leakage checker. If there's any sign of leakage at all, I'll just replace them. And I might go through the power supply and check that as well. But um, then I'll clean up all the output jacks and I'll actually bend the pins a bit so that they're tighter connection when you plug in outputs. Give it a good clean up and it should be good to go. So I want to show you something interesting here. This transistor here with the white paint on top is specially selected for its noise factor. So in the very early 808s they used a chip called the C828 and Roland actually bought up all the rejected chips from I think it was Mitsubishi at the time who provided the transistors because it had a special noise characteristic that worked really well with the hi-hats. So in the early ones, you'll find a chip called a 2SC828. And later when they ran out of those rejected chips, they had an RZ after them, after the name, so you could tell it was a rejected chip. They went and chose a 945, which is a replacement transistor that they could get. And this one, they especially chose it for its noise characteristic. So if you replace that with a modern transistor, the TR-808 won't sound the same. So that's a really good thing to have in there. It means that it's original condition as it left the factory and designed to have a unique characteristic. So there you are. It's good. That's the paint marked transistor chosen for its special noise characteristic. This is the output jack board. <clears throat> I've just gone through and reflowed these solder joints, heated them up and put new solder on them. And also where the actual hot contacts are, this is the earth point for each one. And these are the actual contacts. I've just reflowed those to make sure that there's no dry, dry solder joints. Sucked off the old solder and put fresh solder on them just to make sure that the outputs are good. All the other ones look good as well. And they were all working anyway, but just check all that stuff over before it put it back together. I checked the, the um, main capacitors and they're not leaking. They're good in the power supply, so it's all nice and clean and neat. And all those capacitors checked out okay, so no need to rip them out and replace them. So the 808's all back together. So just to round it off, the things that were wrong were the master fader was really dirty, so I cleaned all that out. There was also a pinched cable in here. There's a, a cable loom that goes to the output board. The One of the wires had broken off and been resoldered, but it was still bare and exposed, so that was shorting out as well. So it was sort of intermittently working and not. And the output jacks were also very loose, so I just bent the tip prong inside the actual jack to make them a bit tighter and gave them a really good clean as well with some deoxit. And then cleaned all the switches and all the knobs, uh, cleaned all the pots out, did a calibration as per the manual, and should be all good. So let's check it out. <laughs> 